So we should keep in mind that whatever altruistic motives you market, whether it's to help Canadian soldiers or whatever it is, yes. there's also something else in it for Karl Heinz Schreiber that you're not prepared to reveal. Is that not right? Why would I not reveal it? But I'm, well, not, you didn't. I'm not advertising. Are you advertising your business? What are you talking about? Mr. Schreiber, you have conceded to the commissioner. You haven't revealed this. It's your business, right? The money you were going to make, you did not reveal it. I revealed it to the, to the commission. Oh, I don't you still did it now. I guess that's why we waited Look, for the commission. And, and so many grateful people. Why don't you ask then your, your, your client why he was so grateful to me? I helped Mr. You too. Schreiber, so answer my question. We spoke about that. I like to help people. That's correct, including your client. Excuse me? You don't act only to help people. You, that, is that what you I said? I love it. I love to help people. But you also ha like to help yourself, money-wise. You, if, you if you want to help people, you have to have the sources to do it. Or you have to steal it from somebody else. Isn't that simple? Mr. Schreiber, yes. you like to help yourself. Is that not right? No. I am you very ambitious. To... I am very ambitious in my business. And the outcome as a positive result in a business is the income. Right. That's the proof of success. Are you with me? You did not do this, engage in these ventures as a charitable act. There was a lot of it in it for you, correct? If it would have succeeded, yeah. yes, All yes, right. absolutely. For each and everybody involved. It okay. didn't happen? Mr. Pratt, I didn't care about the uh, officials, I tell you quite frankly. As long as you have the word from the boss, why would I run around and ask everybody around in the house whether they've, how they feel about it? It's not my world in, uh, where I live in. We agreed to work together when he is out of office and we made the agreement at Mirabel. End of the story. Right. The agreement to work on their head was not made at Harrington Lake. It was made at Mirabel. Right? That's what you just said. Well, no, 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 no. Mr. Maruni offered his help on Bearhead when he is out of office because he will have a preferred position, especially when Kim Campbell is the new prime minister and he expected her to win another majority. Right. So, but regardless what it was, the discussion at Harrington Lake, what, what the hell is going to happen with Bearhead now? So the agreement was made, though, at Mirabel. You said that. That's yeah. when you made the yeah, contract. But we made it clear. We, this is what we have in mind, and we have to finalize it when I come the next time, and the, this was a Mirabel. The contract was made, the agreement was made at Mirabel. Absolutely. Right. It was at this meeting that Mr. Mulroney and I entered into the agreement that you're suing on. No. Well, the, that's what you're saying there, sir. We entered the agreement to agree. Right. To, to work together when we work. That is, these are two agreements. First is the agreement to work together when he's out of office. Second is, what are the details now? You say one of the terms of the agreements with Mr. Mulroney is that he would perform services on my behalf etc. to establish the Bearhead Industries. The agreement that is described in this affidavit is a complete agreement. It is not an agreement in principle. You never refer to those terms. You are suing on the agreement that you say was made at Harrington Lake in this document, not at Mirabel. And I put it to you, sir, that you did that because you were trying to get the Ontario courts to take jurisdiction at that time. Do you see a reference to an agreement to agree there, an agreement in principle in your affidavit? Yeah, but this is my understanding. Well, is that another part of the affidavit that is not quite correct because you didn't have all the documents? <laughs> no, nothing was spelled out in, in, in different documents, and we had no documents in Mirabel at all. Did you draft this, or did your lawyers draft this My lawyers you? did this, yes. This is an appropriate time to break, sir. And let me say something to you just for your better understanding. In the detention center, you are not sitting there and your lawyers can come and do and be there often as they want. It was pretty difficult for them. Take a break. Thank you, sir. Mulroney, any pamphlets or brochures having to do with the Thyssen, I think it's called TH-495, the, the vehicle that was being tested? It could be because I saw in, the, in my file somehow a message which had come from Germany 
to Mr. Doucette, and I think Mr. Doucette gave it to me so that I could give it, or Mr. Alford gave it to me so that I could give it to Mr. Maroon. It was some new information. Yes. All right. So that was brand new material, and I take it that that was sent to uh, Mr. Alford, and Mr. Alford gave it, I think, to me so that I could bring it to Mr. Maroon. Okay. And and that information is technical information about the capa capabilities of the TH-495. Absolutely. Okay. See, there are various pictures of the um, TH-495. It's a family, yes. Yeah. Right? And some yeah. of which we could see the UN insignia. Which, which one? You can see the UN logo on these pictures. If you go six or seven pages in, there's, there's one page that's entitled the Hentel Defense Technology, the TH-495 Infantry Combat, Combat Vehicle, ICV. ICV, yes. Yes, and you see the UN logo on the picture. UN, yes. Okay, and if you flip a couple of other pages, or the next page also, the UN logo. Maybe Mr. Hughes could help you. Oh, find yeah, that, this is... Uh, I think this is more or less a brochure on the TH-49 right, uh, right. uh, Infantry Combat Vehicle ICY for UNO purposes, for UN purposes. Right. Yes. And so because these vehicles, amongst other things, could be used in peacekeeping missions sponsored by the UN, right? No, it was designed for that with the Canadian generals. Right. Do you know what that is? Never heard about it. Never heard about it. No. <laughs> You mean the Britain account in Switzerland from the bank account? Yes. Yes. That didn't refer to Brian Mulroney, did it? Well, it referred to Britain and Brian. It referred to it referred to Mr. Mulroney? Yes. Britain and Brian. The project and Brian Mulroney. Or other questions, you will have committed grave wrongs against Mr. Mulroney and Mr. Schreiber. That would be false, inaccurate, malicious, groundless inference. There is no resemblance to the truth in that reckless suggestion. Do you see that? Yes. Was that letter written with your consent? I saw it lately, but sure, when my lawyer is writing such a letter, I agree. So that's true what Mr. Greenspan is saying? There is no link between Britain and Brian Mulroney? Came later on, yeah, going on, 99. Yeah, that's not... Excuse me, sir? I have a problem with it. You're not suggesting that Mr. Greenspan just went ahead and write, wrote a letter like this, threatening the CBC without your instructions and your information, are you? Well, the account was uh, set up at the beginning just for Breton, for the Cape Breton project, barehead, and that's it. No, so sorry, sir, just time, answer my at question. At that time, he was right. At that time, he was right? Yes. 